Hi everybody, how you doing today? Good. Good. I want to talk today a little bit about motivation, and it's specifically motivation in the workforce. Now, let me ask you something as a manager. Do you think one of your jobs is to motivate your employees? Yeah. Do you think as a leader, part of your job is to motivate the other leaders in the, uh, in the organization? Yeah. Do you think so? Unfortunately, that's not true. Because all motivation is self-motivation. Listen closely. Listen to that again. All motivation is self-motivation. Even a decision to do nothing is a decision based on self-motivation. All motivation comes from within. So then as a manager, what do we do? If we can't motivate anybody, what's our job? Our job is to create a climate of motivation for individuals to motivate themselves. That's what managers do. They create climates of motivation so that other individuals within their organization can self-motivate. Now, let's stop for a second and actually dissect that word. Let's take a look at the word motivation. Now, if you look at that word, doesn't it actually look like two words? Like, for example, if I put a line right here, doesn't it look like two words? Like, doesn't it look like if I just add a letter here, like an E? What do I have? Motive. Motive. What's a motive? Any of you ever watch Law and Order? The law part, the police part? They talk about a motive, what's a motive? You can give it to me one word, so there's a synonym for it. What's a motive? Can't think of it. Reason. Reason. <laughs> and what about this? Does it look like if I add one letter here? What do we get? Action. action. Now, if you look at the word action, what do you think of? Doing something. To do, doing something. So if you take a look at the word motivation, isn't it really a reason to do? I know if I take this blue line and move it one over, it almost looks like more vacation. But, <laughs> but in general, what we have here, when we talk about motivation, is we have a reason to do. That's the whole idea behind motivation. Now, this happens a lot at work. In the workplace, a manager may say, okay, I'm going to motivate my employees. Hey, employees, you get a bonus if you do this. Quid pro quo. You do this, you get that. But then what happens after the bonus goes away? What happens after the reward goes away? What happens to performance? Goes down. Goes back to where it was. So then the manager is all, all upset because the fact that the level of motivation didn't stay at the higher level and they start saying to the employees, you will go back to that higher level of motivation or there's going to be trouble. Terminations will continue until morale improves. That doesn't work. Hmm. Let me tell you what, what this reminds me of. Any of you ever see the old uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons with Yosemite Sam? Yeah. They, are they still on? Because that was all the rage back when I was uh, growing up, back when TV was still in black and white. Uh, any of you uh, remember uh, seeing uh, Yosemite Sam was this little dude with this big red mustache that almost went down to his knees? And I remember one episode. Bugs Bunny was going to stake out a gold mine. And Yosemite Sam got wind of it, so he wanted to get to the spot before Bugs Bunny did. So what did Yosemite Sam do? He loaded this donkey up with all the supplies he could ever need. And as he was loading the donkey, if you see the donkey, the legs becoming more and more unstable. Then Yosemite Sam jumps on top and he points like this. And what does he expect the donkey to do? To move. But the donkey can't move. He's too weighed down. But Yosemite Sam has an idea. And magically, just like you would expect in a cartoon, from behind his back, he pulls out a stick with a string and a carrot on it. Now, I want you to think about what the dynamic of that means. 
He's sitting on top of the donkey, holding a stick, dangling the carrot from a string. Hopefully he points that in the right direction, and the end result is, what does he expect the donkey to do? Chase the carrot. To move in the right direction by chasing the carrot. Because what does he assume that the donkey likes? Carrots. Carrots. Kind of a reward, isn't it? However, because the stick is basically connected to the donkey through Yosemite Sam, the donkey moves forward. What happens to the carrot? It moves forward by the exact amount the donkey did. So what doesn't the donkey get? The carrot. The carrot. In result, the donkey moves again. And the carrot moves. And the donkey moves again. And the carrot moves. Now, isn't this exactly what Yosemite Sam, the manager of this operation, wanted? He's getting forward movement. Now, donkeys have never been blessed with a large intellect. I mean, if you think about it, they have the nickname of an ass. But eventually, what's the donkey going to realize? Uh, I ain't getting this reward. So, what does Yosemite Sam have to do to keep the donkey moving? Well, what if he gave him a bite of the carrot? What if he gave him a bite of the carrot? Now, the donkey tastes the carrot, and what does he do? Hopefully, he moves forward again. But wait a minute. Did the dynamic change here? First of all, is the carrot as big and juicy and beautiful as it was before? No, there's a bite on it. Secondly, how do we know this donkey likes carrots? What if this is a carrot-hating donkey? It took a bite of the carrot, and now it knows. But more importantly, think about what Yosemite Sam did. What did he reward the donkey for? When did the donkey get the carrot? Think hard about this, because this is the crux of this type of motivation. When did the donkey get the carrot? stopped. Isn't that the exact opposite of the goal? The goal was to keep the donkey moving, wasn't it? And we rewarded the donkey when it stopped. Now, if the donkey went a mile before it got a taste of the carrot, can we assume that it's going to stop again for another taste of the carrot? probably less than a mile, and then less time than that, and less time than that. In result, we are rewarding the exact opposite of the kind of behavior that we want. And eventually, if we're not at the gold mine yet, and the carrot's gone, our resources to motivate are no longer there. This is called incentive motivation ladies and gentlemen, incentive motivation. And does incentive motivation work? Sure it does, in the short run. You could incentivize somebody to do something. However, when the incentive goes away, so does the behavior that you were incentivizing. We go back to the norm. So here's the donkey now. We're not at the gold mine yet. Yosemite Sam is sitting on top of the donkey and we're not to where we need to be. But unfortunately, the carrot's gone. So, what does Yosemite Sam do since he can't utilize incentive motivation anymore? It's real easy. You get rid of the string, and you take the stick. And what do you do with the stick? You give the donkey a whack out of behind. Now think about what happens here. The donkey feels this stinging sensation on his backside, which direction does he move? He moves in the opposite direction. Hopefully, in the direction that you're aiming him. You whack him again. He moves again. He 
You whack him again. He moves again. Does this work? Sure it works. This is called fear motivation. And fear motivation works in the short run. But there's a delicate dynamic at work here. Just like when the donkey was eating the carrot, his hunger was changing, the carrot was changing. There's a delicate dynamic here. This donkey is loaded with all of this stuff. He's feeling pain on his bottom from the stick. But isn't he also feeling pain in his hooves from walking? The donkey will continue to move forward as long as the pain on his backside caused by the stick is greater than the pain in his hooves from carrying everything. Once his hooves hurt more than his bottom, what's the donkey going to do? Collapse. It's going to stop. It's not going to move anymore. And at that point, what could you do with the stick? You could break it over him. It's not going to make any difference because his feet hurt more than his butt. That's fear motivation. And managers do this all the time. So here we have incentive motivation. Yes, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you stuff for doing more. And when the stuff goes away and you go back, the manager's mad. They start talking about terminations. They start talking about time off. They start talking about all of these necessary fear components to try to get you back into that higher level of behavior. Both fear motivation and incentive motivation work, ladies and gentlemen. They work, but they work in the short run. Isn't there some type of a long-term motivation? Something that we can use as managers and leaders and executives. Isn't there something that we can use all the time? And there is. Wouldn't it be nice if we can take that donkey and turn it into a Mustang? The horse, not the car. Maybe the car, but the horse, not the car. Because what do Mustangs do? If, if I ask you what's one of the best attributes of a Mustang, what would you say? The car? No, the horse. <laughs> <laughs> it runs, doesn't it? Why do Mustangs run? They don't have a choice. That's part of their natural inclination is to run. Our job on top of a Mustang isn't to get it to run. Our job is to get it to stop. To get it to stop running, to get it in the right direction. Now, needless to say, I know that we can't turn a donkey into a Mustang. But people aren't donkeys. Employees have the ability to change. And if, in fact, we tried using short-term motivators like fear motivation and incentive motivation and found that the level of behavior went up and then back down. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use a different type of motivation, a longer-term motivation, and we can. That's called attitude motivation. Attitude motivation. I'm going to give you a very quick working definition of the word attitude. An attitude is a habit of thought. It's a habit. Habits are formed by repetition. An attitude is a habit of the way we think. Well, what if we can, in fact, take an employee and cause them to want to do more, to excel, not because of any kind of intrinsic or external motivation, but because they want to? Then what we have is a group of individuals all moving forward in the right direction, in the correct direction, in the direction that we as executives set. And that's exactly our job as managers, to develop employees with attitude motivation, to move them in a certain direction. How do we do that? We do that through our own behavior, which employees see all the time. We do that in terms of how we communicate with our employees. We do that in terms of how well we set our own personal goals and help our employees set their goals. In other words, we create that climate of motivation for individuals to motivate themselves. Three types of motivation. Two are short-term, 
one is long term. Two don't work, one does. The two that don't work are fear motivation and incentive motivation. They work, but not forever. Attitude motivation is the long term motivation, and that's the motivation that lasts forever. Our job as managers is to develop that climate of attitude motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I do appreciate you listening. And if there's any questions, feel free to see me after class. Thank you.